have a wonderful guest for you right now. Um, on a lot of people's minds is uh, women's breast cancer, which actually is on the rise in men as well. We have a doctor here today that specializes in this. She was a huge hit last year as one of our expert, um, you know, doctors. And I want you to pay close attention to what this gal has to say. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Christy Funk. <laughs> Look at this hot tamale. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you All right. It was my um, third year of residency, and I was super excited. I was on the liver service, and it was going to be my very first surgery that I owned. He was going to be my assistant, the attending, and we were going to do a hepatic trisegmentectomy, which I put this picture up here, which is not a breast, um, just so you can admire how hard it was. So it was super hard. So what we were about to do is clamp off the blood supply to the liver, and then you crunch through the tissue, and all of a sudden, hundreds of these wispy little vessels, arteries, veins, bile ducts, appear and you've got to clip the side that goes once and clip the side that stays twice and then you cut down the middle in case one clip falls off that's why there's two so clip 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 cut clip 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 cut it's like a dance right you can't go too slow because you have about 20 minutes and then that ischemic time to the liver and then all the toxins that would go into the body creates really bad things like people die so you have 20 minutes and if you go too fast and your clips fall off uh, a lot of blood happens and people die so I'm ready. I have been preparing this since kindergarten. And um, I asked for the clamp, and I'm about to clamp off the blood vessel, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, whoom, comes this other clamp that hits my hand. And I look up at Johnny Ryan Jr. and his beady little eyes between his mask and his hat, and I'm like, I don't speak. I mean, he's the attending. I, he said, hey, you're doing one thing right now. One thing. Do it right. OK, for the record, I was not about to do it wrong. But what he said that moment changed my life, changed my thinking, you know? You're doing one thing. You're listening to me. You are on your cell phone checking Facebook. You can do more than one thing at the same time. And we women and men love to multitask, myself included, brag about it all the time. But really, that just tells me that you're really good at doing less than your best for multiple things at the same time which is okay if it's like laundry and talking on the phone. But you know when your child says, hey, mom, can I talk to you? Put the phone down. Walk around the kitchen island. Get down to his or her eye level and be like, what's up, babe? What do you want to say? If you're doing sit-ups, crunch. You got to feel that burn. Do you want abs or not? You're going to talk on the phone and do your sit-ups? So I had this honor with BCBG. They did this huge interview. It was like eight hours and a photo shoot and everything. And the only, only smart thing I think I said, I guess, because this is all they wrote, was this philosophy of mine. Just do it right. Why would you do it wrong when you can do it right? That was my mentality when I birthed the Pink Lotus Breast Center. So I was one of the directors of the Cedar sinai Breast Center for eight years. And my husband, Andy, and I were like, you know what? We can just do it better. We can, we can do this thing right. We want to deliver the best possible breast health care in Los Angeles and then in the world. Like big dreams, right? And people would say, this place is awesome. You know, you should do all women's health. You should do cardiology and gynecology, blah, 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 blah. All breasts, one thing. All day, all night, just breasts. Because when you do one thing, you can do it really well. Turns out this idea was birthed eight years ago. Uh, in January 08 on a ski lift in Mammoth. And so then we were all jazzed about our new idea and we came back to LA and I searched around and I got these three other breast surgeons and they're all going to join me in March 08. I found the perfect space. It was huge. It had two ORs and lots of rooms and the heart of Beverly Hills. And then in October 08, I signed the lease, 50000 a month. And um, in well, March 23rd, 09, which if you could expand this graph out, it's only funny now in retrospect. March 23rd is the nadir, the actual boop day we opened doors. No other surgeons came with me. <laughs> I was holding this crazy monthly nut all on my own, and no banks were funding. We were out of money in a hot second. I sold the car to pay the rent. Oh, I was in March 09, four months pregnant with triplets. So. 
they were really rough times. I mean, in, in two seconds, I was going to need two au pairs, a bigger house, 30 diapers a day, and it was nuts. I mean, there were days where, weeks in the last years where we couldn't buy groceries. I was on the verge of eviction and bankruptcy, and I didn't even lose weight when I couldn't buy groceries. Terrible. It was bad. But we came through it. And you know what? It wasn't because of success. It wasn't because of PR and going on a couple of TV shows now and again. It was because with every day I woke up excited to do one thing. Each time I did what this woman in front of me, what's the one thing we, we get to do? The woman on the table giving her my best. I'm doing one thing. It doesn't matter that I have to lecture at Skirball in two hours. I'm in the middle of a mastectomy, which I was. So, but you know what? I wasn't in a hurry. I didn't think about that. I was doing one thing. And so when I can't look at that table of <laughs> breast cancer survivors over there. You guys rock. You're so beautiful. And this next question, I have to look over here or I will just cry. All right, so let's start our actual talk. When I say you have breast cancer, and you ask me, how can I do this? I think back to one thing. You know what? You can do one thing. You can go get your MRI. Just get a breast MRI. It's one thing. And after that, we'll do some surgery. One thing. And maybe you'll need some chemo. One thing. And you just think to yourself, what matters most? Why do I have to live? Why do I want to live? Why is this cancer making me want to live so much? And you keep your eyes on that or those reasons, and you just do one thing. Well done. <laughs> Question nine. What is the BRCA mutation, and do I have it? So BRCA, B-R-C-A, it's a gene. We all have it. It's supposed to function. And when it does, it surveys the land of your breasts and ovaries particularly. And when DNA goes awry, it either fixes it or throws it out. When your BRCA is broken, you have a mutation. These genes go awry, and your body's helpless to fight against it. And it's significant because when you have a mutation, you have up to 87% chance of getting breast cancer and up to 44% chance of getting ovarian cancer. So do you have it? Well, here are, here's the short list. If you think of mom and dad's side, one, two, and three generations back. So it actually matters what your father's mother's brother died from. Because was it pancreatic cancer? Could be BRCA2. So two relatives with breast cancer prior to age 50 or ovarian cancer at any age, insurance will cover your testing. Jewish special, if you're Ashkenazi Jewish, you just need one of those. So one breast cancer prior to 50 or ovarian cancer at any age. If you yourself have had breast cancer prior to menopause, if you had what's called triple negative breast cancer before age 60, if you yourself had two separate different breast cancers, any men in the family with breast cancer, any known BRCA gene mutation carrier in the family, pancreatic cancer plus an ovary or breast, or just like a whole lot of cancer going on on one side of the family, particularly breast, ovarian, pancreas, prostate, colorectal, gastric, uterine, or melanoma, you should test. If you're like, what, what was that list? BRCAGeneTest.com, free one-minute quiz, answer five questions. It will tell you whether or not you meet insurance criteria for testing. Question eight, do I need a mammogram and what kind? Oh, we women get thrown a new study every other month, it seems, right? Saying, start at 50, start at 45, go every other year. Don't get them at all, right? Well, I have a number of women at that table, 16, that will attest to you should get your mammograms. And my recommendation is you start at age 40. You get them every single year. You don't stop and you don't skip until you plan to die within the next five years. And if you look at the numbers, and if you think about what the latest study most probably know about is American Cancer Society says, you know, normal risks start at age 45. 45, let's do the math on that. Okay, so somewhere in between that is about 50, 20, about 27,000 invasive cancers that we don't care to screen for and almost 5,000 deaths. Um, I say start at 40. <laughs> There's a lot of life in the younger ages, right? These are women of, uh, who have huge careers going on and little kids at home, so those are the ones you're not going to screen. Actually, no, they are equally discriminating because they say to stop getting your mammograms at age 64 and maybe go every other year. The median age of breast cancer in the United States is 61 years old. 
So if you stop getting your mammo every year and go every other year, so you know what was stage one, might be two or three, so when you didn't eat chemo, now you do, um, that's about 130,000 invasive cancers a year. That's about 30,000 deaths a year. So that's my recommendation. What kind should you get? You need to know how dense your breasts are. So we grade density. This has levels. It's actually A through D now. They changed it. So levels one and two are A and B have more fat in the breast than dense breast tissue. So it turns out MAMO is very readable and fairly accurate, very accurate in the fattier breasts. So they can get away with a straight digital mammogram. But if you're in levels three or four or C and D, that means you have more actual breast tissue than fat. And on a mammogram, as you can see, there's more white. There's more of a snowstorm going on. And unfortunately, cancer is always white. So now you're looking for a snowball in a snowstorm in dense breasts. So what I recommend beyond digital, just for dense breasts, is a newer digital mammogram called 3D, or tomosynthesis. So this is a mammogram. You still get squashed, sorry, same squishing. But it takes like 15 slices through the breast. So instead of taking a loaf of bread and just going and taking one picture, we're getting some slices and some inside look into all that whiteness. The latest study just showed a 34% increase in breast cancer detection using 3D tomo in dense breasts over straight digital, and a 17% drop in callback rates, which is great. That's a false positive where they're like, mm, we see something, is probably nothing, but you know, come in and let's look some more, which creates anxiety and biopsies and you know, your life flashes before your eyes, all for nothing. So it drops that callback rate. So dense breasts, I want you to think 3D tomo and whole breast screening ultrasound, which insurance in California mostly pays for now if your breasts are dense. So whole breast screening ultrasound. If you're also at elevated cancer risk, maybe you have a gene mutation, maybe you've already had breast cancer and you have dense breasts, I up the ante entirely. You don't get the 3D tomo, you get contrast enhanced spectral mammography. It's a mammogram where you get an IV contrast injection and then we do a two view mammo, boom, boom. And the top view, the white ones, that's a normal digital. The bottom view is the contrast injection. So you can see that on that one breast, there's suddenly just one white splotch standing out like a star in a night sky, all because of the contrast. There's no more uh, views or anything. So here's an example of a 28-year-old girl that I had. Her breast was a rock, and it was just hard to evaluate. But all of a sudden, you inject that contrast, and on your right, you can see on the lower side, there's these blobs, like three little blobs there. They were all cancers. So contrast mammo, six months later, breast MRI. So for my high-risk people, contrast mammo, plus screening ultrasound, six months later, breast MRI. Next question, do I have to examine my breasts because they're like a lumpy, bumpy mess and it totally wigs me out? I, I get it, but here's the thing. Yes, you do. So easybreastexam.com, I have a little four minute video that you can just watch. It, it is really thorough and people love it. They're like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. It takes some of the mystery out of it, but I wanna encourage you to do this. Just do your breast exam, take the pressure off. You're not there to find cancer. You're there just to understand the lay of the land. In an unconscious way, your fingers will develop a memory of what the, your breast is supposed to feel like. Don't tell yourself, you're trying, is that cancer? Is it not? Just six months, just do it. And then one day, and I know at least four of my ladies at table 16, <laughs> breastfeeding or not, came in saying, this just doesn't feel right. You know. So don't tell me, American Cancer Society, that people shouldn't do self-breast exams. You can save your own life. Is it okay if I drink alcohol? Um, yes, it is, so lucky us. What is alcohol? What is a drink? It's 14 grams in America. It's bigger, we're supersized. It's 12 grams in Europe. Anyway, um, 12 ounces of beer equals five ounces of wine equals 1.5 ounces of hard liquor. So pick your poison, here we go. A drink a day, oh, a drink a day could keep heart attacks away. So that's, that's happy. Let's move on. A drink a day increases breast cancer by 10%. Two drinks a day, 30%. Three drinks a day, 40%, and on and up from there. So here's the bottom line. You're allowed to have a drink a day, ladies, two drinks a day for you men, without any significant increase in your breast cancer risk and a significant decrease in your heart attack risk, but I have an inside scoop for you. Turns out, folate, folic acid, 600 micrograms a day, literally negates almost nine, over 90% of the risk associated with alcohol and breast cancer. So, just if you do drink, take the folic acid, pinklotus.com, actually we have a whole new brand line of organic, vegan, really not all vitamins are created equal. But anyway, um, yeah, so folic acid, it's a, it, you'll still drive drunk, but the breast effect will. 
Number five, I know, I need to lose weight. Notice it's not a question, okay, because we all know who's chubby. No one says, do I need to lose weight? No, we know, we need to lose weight. If you're not sure, though, if you're chubby or fat, let me not be your friend for a second. Google it, body mass index, plug in the numbers, and if your BMI is over 40, you are fat. And it's really not that funny because you're doubling your risk for getting breast cancer, for recurring if you already had it, and from dying from breast cancer. I do have really good news, though. If you lose that weight, multiple studies over and over show that you lose the risk. Okay, back to being nicer. Um, how much exercise do I need? Glad you asked. Turns out that just briskly walking for 11 minutes a day drops breast cancer by 18%. If you put a little pep in your step and sweat it out for three to four hours a week of vigorous exercise, you can drop cancer by 40%. So get up off of that couch. Do you think stress causes breast cancer? Of course, any cancer, and it absolutely does. Can I prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt? No, because how are you going to hold stress constant and test the stressed out people versus the not? But it does weaken your immune system. And if I ask women, did something heartbreaking happen five to eight years ago? They almost all say, yeah, I went through a divorce or so-and-so died or my parents. The, something, something sets your immune system off with stress. So you've got to zen it up. You've got to deep breathe. I don't know how to cause you to stop stressing, but I can tell you one thing. Get rid of the negativity in your life. Surround yourself with positive people who bring you up. We do enough to bring ourselves down, right? Ladies, you think it all the time. 50,000 thoughts fly through your head every day. Science shows 80% of it is negative. Oh, my boss never notices me. My butt looks big in this dress. Stop it. Stop talking to yourself the way you would never talk to your friends. Is there anything else I should be asking you? Yes, three cups of green tea a day cuts breast cancer in half. I hate green tea, plug and chug every day at noon, just do it. <laughs> Last question, how can I help? Well, one thing very near and dear to my heart, and you may notice on the back corner over there, is the Pink Lotus Foundation. I'm the founding ambassador. The foundation provides 100% free breast cancer screening, diagnoses, care, surgery, radiation, all of the treatments and support to low-income, uninsured, and underinsured women. Thank you. It's an extremely exciting foundation. We're still in the nation, nascent stages. It's been for about a year now, and I'll tell you, it's life transformative for people who have disease or just think they do. There's this group of women on Skid Row, they came, they got their mammograms, tears. They were all negative. I, for a second, I was like, I, you don't have cancer. Why are you crying? And then you realize, you know, they've never had a mammogram in their lives. They just decided, well, well once you do it, you're going to find out that I'm going to die next week, right? Tears of joy just by a mammogram being negative. People are also affected by adverse life events, and it happens. It happens all around us. So you make 50 grand a year, right? You're doing okay. And then something hits you. At the same time, cancer hits you. Um, you know, you get divorced, your spouse dies, your house burns down, and you're diagnosed with breast cancer. You'll go bankrupt or homeless trying to pay for your diagnosis. And good luck, you can't get emergency Medi-Cal if you happen to not have insurance and you make more than poverty level, no insurance for you. So we're here to stop the madness and help. Please keep us in mind. And one really simple way, BCBG created these really comfortable unisex awesome t-shirts that are for sale back there. 100% of profits go to the Pink Lotus Foundation. Um, so buy yours today. And today when you buy it, we are gonna split all profits with Cancer Schmancer and the foundation. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Funk. You know